Yeah, I'm MZ and uh, my background is actually in electronic engineering, but I'm into IT uh, like for a very, very long time and uh, also Bitcoin. And um, I mostly, in Bitcoin space, I mostly do uh, uh, different things, um, like small things. So for example, I'm running a DNS seed for Bitcoin Core. I'm doing reproducible builds for Electrum and I'm running an Electrum server and um, I'm involved with BISC and running their server. So mostly it's like um, Swiss admin stuff that I'm doing. So running servers for several services. So that's, that's what I'm doing mostly. And I'm also on the team for Mempool Space. And that's also involved because I'm running my own Mempool Space full instance. And so everything that has something to do with servers. I think really important uh, or, or overlooked thing is um, that you know that what you're running on your device is actually the source code that other people can look at. So even if you have a wallet and it says, okay, this is an open source project and you can look at the code, if you're downloading it, for example, on your phone from, from the Play Store or from the App Store, um, then you're not, I mean, there's no direct connection that this source code that you can look at and is human readable is actually the binary that, that your device is executing and running. So there could be something changed because there is, uh, there's not directly a connection. And the, uh, what it solves is something that is called reproducibility. And you can, so different people can run the same process that the developer does to uh, get from the source code to the binary file. For example, I'm doing that uh, for Bitcoin Core. So Bitcoin Core has like 15 people, around 15 people that doing exactly the same build and coming, from, coming to the same binary that it runs on the devices. And like every 15 people checking that they're coming to exactly the same result. So, I mean, like 15 people needs to, about 15 people needs to collide to, to uh, put something else in that is not in the source code that it's compiled from. And I'm doing the same thing for Electrum. There are only three people, the two de main developers and I are doing this. And um, yeah, so, so that's where I got into it. And there's a really nice website um, called Wallet Scrutiny. It's from, oh, the, I think, yeah, it's from uh, Leo Wanderslab and he, he thinks also the same thing. There needs to be like a list of, it's, it's like a list or a lookup where you can see which wallet can be reproducibly built. So it's sure that you, you have exactly the same thing on your device than the source code. And um, the, ma the main list he started for all the um, Android devices because he comes from the Android from Android devices and like all the Android wallets are listed, but now also hardware wallets are listed and, and that's also like an important thing that you know. I mean, for example, Trezor is like the best example. They always promote, they are totally open source, um, but it's not enough if they compiling it and saying it's the source, somebody else needs to verify it. And this is a website where you can look up and it's like, it's pretty technical, but um, it's also explaining the way how they figured out that this is like actually a legit build. And I think it's like shocking how many open, open source wallets um, are not reproducible. So there, there is something missing and it's really complicated. It's like a software challenge to have something exactly building the same uh, every time that you build it because something can change. Exa the, the, the easiest thing is the, uh, the clock time of your computer is changed and maybe the clock time is somehow built into the binary that you execute and then everyone who builds this to another time has a different binary and you need to like, it's not an easy task but uh, it's like an important step that you be sure that you're running if you're downloading it from the app store for example on Android that uh, on iPhone um, that's exactly the source code. So that's like the, I think it's a uh, important thing and people should look at that website or maybe even pressure if they have like a favorite wallet and saying you need to have this. It's not enough that you're saying the source code is here and here's the binary uh, and trust us that it's the same. <laughs> I mean, we don't want to trust 
third parties. That's like the thing in Bitcoin. The main thing is that uh, you, you, you can't trust a wallet where you don't, where nobody can look at the source code. The wallet can basically do anything what it likes. So, so um, you can't trust anything where you don't, where not everybody can look at and yourself can look at what it actually does. So this is like the first step. Um, if you have a closed source wallet and um, then everything is out of the window. The wallet can basically do everything. And it's like a moving target. It could be a fine wallet that is not stealing anything at some point. And then later you get an update and it's totally different. And nobody can look at it or easily look at it. And nobody can see. It's like a super hard thing to figure out if you have the binary file that's the, that your devices execute to figure out what it actually does. Therefore, it's the source code where it's like a human readable format where you can see what's, what's happening. And this is like the first step without having an open source wallet. So for me, it's a no brainer if it's a closed source wallet, um, then basically you're 100% trusting the other party. It's like one step uh, um, after a custodial wallet, basically. I think this conference, Malauka Blockchain Days, are really underrated somehow. Uh, I mean, um, there could be much more people coming and it's like a super event, super location. I mean, also the island is amazing. You can do other stuff here. I think maybe one problem is that, that uh, friends of mine had was it was not a Bitcoin only event. I mean, in the name it was blockchain. And that's somehow scared of people. I don't know why, but they are like the super maximalist and they're saying, and if you're looking at the event itself, it's like, it's mostly Bitcoin only. It's like, like slivers of other stuff. And <laughs> I mean, it's not a shitcoin conference to say it bluntly, <laughs> but uh, somehow the name seems to be a problem. But uh, if you overlook that, it's a nice Bitcoin event and uh, really enjoyable.